Today I'm talking about these three critical tips for increasing your wealth. Let's get to the three tips. Anyone can follow these tips, but not everyone will. Uh, because quite honestly, they require a change in habits. Some people find those changes to be off-putting. Uh, they're used to what they're used to. They grew up a certain way, uh, and, and they don't want to change those habits. So a lot of people will not take advantage of these tips. Uh, but they are essential if you want to achieve that next level of financial success. Uh, and I think we all do, don't we? Uh, uh, you know, again, I'm talking a lot about uh, reducing lifestyle. Again, uh, and Dennis and I talked yesterday, uh, not, not about becoming minimalists per se, but reducing to what's necessary. So I guess that's, uh, I found the word the other day, essentialist, uh, which I've heard before, but I didn't quite get it. I think I'm probably more of an essentialist than I am a minimalist. Uh, but I've been talking a lot about, you know, um, essentialist, uh, you know, reducing your spending so that you have more to, to make over, but we all want to be making more as well. Uh, those things are not... Uh, um, mutually exclusive of each other. Uh, you can want to make more money and still not go off and spend it a whole bunch. It's my impression that everybody wants to have more money. Uh, you know, everybody would like to build their wealth to a point that they could maybe retire someday, uh, maybe even retire early, uh, or at the very least, worry less about your finances every day. So these three tips are gonna help you do that. The first step to building your wealth is to stop your rampant consumption. Now, I know sometimes when I say things, you guys are like, man, that guy is just an absolute genius. So, yes, you have to spend less. Uh, <laughs> it's a tough concept to get to grasp. Uh, and I know I'm probably the only one that's ever thought of it, but we, we've got to stop the binge. The majority of money that people make is wasted on things that they will never use. Things that you're probably going to put in the comments down below. Things that you've bought and have not used. Uh, things that they don't, don't even need. Uh, and honestly, they, they probably won't even think much about after they, they get that initial person purchase. I mean, you keep telling yourself you'll get it under control, you'll get your spending under control. You know, we buy these things, but we buy them for the feeling of buying them, not because we need the, the thing. Uh, you know, we always need that need, uh, that next hot new iPhone. We need that next uh, pair of shoes for the women, uh, next piece of sporting equipment maybe uh, for the men or women. Uh, we just need that purchase more than we need the thing that we're purchasing. We gotta stop with that one more mindset if you truly wanna get wealthy. Now, the, the topic of this show, again, is, is how to become insanely wealthy. And, and I don't, I don't wanna be uh, one of those other chiropractors that makes you try to believe that I'm insanely wealthy, because I'm not. Uh, I'm still out there hustling, doing my thing, uh, and uh, not insanely wealthy. It's clickbait. Uh, it, it's to get someone to click on it. It's funny because I've been making statements about that friday shows have been the, the most watched shows and they've always had these clickbait titles um and i worry if this is a slippery slope because i see some of those other consultants out there making these huge claims about being insanely wealthy then acting like they are insanely wealthy even though i know them uh and i know that's not their car uh, <laughs> that they're doing a, a a video in front of so is that a slippery slope is me just using the title does that mean i'm gonna become become one of them i hope not uh anyways so we still got to get rid of that one more mindset. Um, and again, I just want to clear up that, that I don't think of myself as insanely wealthy either. Anyone who's truly satisfied with their life doesn't get that feeling from that consumer is spending. That comes from us having this need, this want, that we're trying to cover something up. We're trying to uh, you know, hide something. So we decide to go out and spend, 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 spend. Nobody has ever laid their head down at night and slept soundly because they bought that one more thing. That's not what gives us the, the happiness in the world. Uh, nobody needs that next thing. That's not what's going to, uh, again, give you the happiness and help you sleep soundly. We need to clear our physical space, uh, physical and mental space, of all that debris that hinders our, our financial freedom. Um, you know, I talked earlier in the week about um, if you buy one thing, if one thing comes in, you gotta get one thing out, uh, creating some, some margins, some space for you, getting rid of, of clutter around your life. Uh, and the same thing here, when we keep buying and buying and buying, we just get to more clutter as well. So and that stops your financial freedom. It, it distracts you from that. Uh, if we get rid of that extra stuff and embrace a lighter life of less consumption, um, we're going to be able to have more money. So my coffee has arrived. Thank you very much. So. Welcome to Coffee with Dr. Scott. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, Terry. So, first tip. To become insanely wealthy, spend less. 
uh, make better decisions. You know, again, I mentioned in the in the clutter episode uh, that I'm not against buying things that you need or that will truly give you happiness. And when you buy those things, I think you should buy the best of them. Um, you know, you shouldn't buy the cheap model if 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 it's going to wear out. Or, you know, make good decisions with your money, but buy less things. Buy what you know. <laughs> again, I'm kind of going back to the clutter one, but my. Uh, you know, when I look at my kids with a hundred toys around them, they're like, I don't have anything to play with. Uh, but if they go on a vacation, they only have two toys to play with. They love those two toys. Uh, I feel like adults are the same thing. Uh, the more you have, the less you think you have. Uh, when you have a couple things that you appreciate and you love, you'll actually feel like you have more. Uh, I know I do in my current life. Uh, I used to have all the toys and all the cars. Um, we moved here. We simplified with the kids, and, and I've been going through this process, and I'm so much happier, so much lighter now. So tip number one, lighten yourself. Second tip for becoming insanely wealthy is to prioritize your time. I know I still have a few habits uh, that I need to, to work on, and I, but I see all the time, especially when I'm traveling, uh, everybody else that has these absolutely terrible habits. Um, and when we have these things because they're distractions for us, you know, a, a phone screen or an iPad screen or a TV screen calls to us like a siren, right? These mindless activities like, you know, Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, uh, while they're fun and can be used productively, end up eating away at, at your time. And as you know, time is money. You may not use your cell phone or, or iPad in a way that, that distracts you, uh, but you probably have your own version, whatever it might be. You might flip through the channels that on, you know, on the TV or watch any TV, really. Uh, I know one of my old mentors used to say that uh, rich people have big libraries, uh, poor people have big TVs. Uh, so these distractions, what you do with your time, anything that eats into your time with mindless or unproductive activities is the enemy, stopping you from, from productive activities. And again, I know we spend a lot of time on Mondays talking about goal setting, talking about uh, um, your focus and, and morning routines. And, and too often, I either see it happening or I talk to people who, again, first thing in the morning, they allow somebody else's agenda to, to take over because they pick up their phone and check their email or check their Twitter or check whatever it is. Uh, I'm not on the Twitter, so I don't know anything about that one. Um, and they get caught up in everybody else's agenda. Uh, that they're not able to do the productive activities that they need to do. Uh, and I work with my clients all the time to make sure that first activity every morning is going to help you grow your business. It's going to help increase your productive capacity, increase your income, so that you can enjoy your life more, enjoy your work more, make progress as you go. Uh, if those first hour or two of the day is what is spent on productive activities, you're much better off than if the first thing you do is pick up and check your email and get distracted by somebody else's problem. Um, which used to be my big one, by the way. Uh, that's probably why I harp on it the most is, is uh, when I owned seven practices, uh, I was, you know, I wouldn't say email was new back then because <laughs> it certainly wasn't new, but certainly wasn't what it is now. What social media wasn't what it was now. But uh, first thing I did every morning was, was check that email and you know, I, I got miserable because every day was dealing with somebody else's problem. When I've changed that uh, and, and, and focused more on making my time more productive, uh, I've become much more happier because I get a lot of stuff done in the morning. And if I get an email at noon when I finally check it that, that, that makes my day go off, I'm fine because I got my, my important stuff done. Uh, you know, we all have unproductive moments during our day. Getting rid of those unproductive moments, getting rid of those distractions is probably not realistic uh, with how much we have going on today. But being aware of what activities are wasting your time, which activities are you know, proven to give you less satisfaction than actually getting stuff done. Um, if you're at least aware of those things, then you can more efficiently prioritize your time uh, and convince yourself to limit those activities. Uh, that is the key here is, is to limit them to the bare minimum of the activities that again don't give you that are your hiding mechanisms they don't even give you I was gonna say they give you happiness but they, they typically don't they are distractions for the sake of distracting you so when we start to prioritize our time and work on things that that give us the biggest bang for our buck the most productive capacity um, a lot of those things we don't have room for some of those things so being aware of them helps with that if secondly, after we prioritize our time for productive capacity, we focus on things that make us happy, if we put the phone down and go hang out with the family, again, there's less distractions there. Um, if we do the things that we enjoy, whether it be exercise, uh, for me, it, it's cooking, barbecuing, uh, riding the bike, uh, going to the gym, stuff of that nature. If you put those things into your priority schedule, 
A, you'll get more done, which is going to help you to become insanely wealthy, which is the whole topic here. Uh, and B, it's going to increase your happiness. But C, and almost more importantly, it's going to reduce those distractions because you don't have, you're not going to have time for them. Which brings us to the last tip, uh, which goes along with what I just said. Last tip is to forget moderation. Stop trying to cut back things just a little. Uh, I know... If you look in the diet world, uh, somebody who just tries to cut back just a little bit doesn't get any progress. Uh, so if you reduce your calories by 100 every day, you're not going to make any progress. You're not going to be happy. Uh, you're probably going to binge eat afterwards. Um, so if currently you're looking at your phone three hours a day or, or playing some video game five hours a day, don't tell yourself, well, okay, I'll just you know look at my phone three hours a day or two hours a day or one hour a day. Just stop looking altogether. Use it for the thing it's necessary for. Um, other than that, Pick a day in the future of that one habit, which is 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 killing your productivity. Pick a day and just go cold turkey. See how much you really need something. Uh, you know, in in dieting, you know, fasting is a big thing, right? I shouldn't say right now, since ancient times. Uh, at least the fasting people will tell you that. But fasting does have some good benefits for you. Just stopping eating altogether, and when you come back, you tend to make better decisions uh, with what you eat. Uh, you tend to not to want to ruin uh, what you've done with the fast. It gets your body prepared for more. The same thing can go for your mental, uh, for your habits. Get rid of everything altogether. Uh, so if there's something you're doing that's distracting you, go cold turkey for two days, three days, a week. Um, and maybe when you come back, you might still want to do that thing, but you'd be able to minimize it like you would if you fasted and you pick up another food that you don't that you shouldn't be eating anyway. Um, same thing here. If it's a habit that you need to get rid of, get rid of it. Um, take a week off. I've talked, uh, I talk a lot, again, in, in organization capacity mindset about docs who, who have a completely messy desk, desk when I walk in to meet them the first time. I tell them there's two ways you can clean this. Uh, one would be to remove the things that you don't think you need. But when you step back from that, you look at it, it doesn't look any different. You barely made a difference. Um, and if you try to use moderation to get rid of your habits, it usually ends up looking like that. You might cut it down a little bit, but it's still distracting you. Uh, my advice for that person is to wipe everything off of that desk into a big box. Put that big box somewhere far, far away. Sit there at your desk for a couple weeks. And as you're working, if you think you need something, go get that one thing. Bring it back to your desk. And you'll realize after a couple of weeks, you didn't need any of that stuff. Uh, the same thing goes with distractions. If you get rid of it completely uh, and block your mind of it for a week or so, when it comes time, when that week is up and you start looking for it, I bet you'll need a lot less of it. So get rid of those habits. Again, forget about moderation. Get rid of them altogether. See how much more productive you can be without it. When you focus that time on your productivity and your happiness, uh, trust me, you're not going to miss those things that you got rid of. Right now, you're doing it because it's there and because it's a habit. Uh, when you change that habit, that's one that's that's easy to keep going. Uh, so go back to the phone example. Uh, a lot of you might uh, you know use the phone too much, and you know obviously you see people driving on the street and they're I don't know what they're doing on their phone, but they're always on their phone. Uh, you see people standing in line, they're on their phone, uh, but. If those are just distractions, maybe put it down and just enjoy the process. Uh, enjoy people. Look at people. Smile at people again. Uh, but if you if you need your phone for work, I do. I mean, I, I, I get all my calls uh, from my clients at work uh, on my phone. So I mean, I need to use my phone. Uh, but you got to decide when it's when it's most productive for you. For me, that's obviously during the work hours, during the morning. Uh, I turn it off at certain times. I turn it on at certain times. Um, so a good way, you know, f to if we're talking about the phone, a good way to kind of lose some time on the phone, uh, but actually still be able to use it when when it might help is, is just to find a time where you ban your phone at home. Again, for me, when I'm done with work here today, uh, I set my phone down here and I bike to get my kids. I don't bring my phone with me. Uh, again, when I get there, every um, every other parent is there on their phone, uh, either in their car waiting for their kids or, or out waiting for their kids. Uh, and I just try not to be that. I, I, Talk and meet people, uh, and it has given me a lot more happiness. Give my kid a lot more happiness too, because we get to meet more families. Uh, everybody else is all in their phone, in their cell phone, and we're not meeting people. Uh, which again, I think that interaction creates a lot of happiness. So, for you with your phone, just pick some times during the day, put it into a, a box, forget about it for a little while, and go do something you enjoy. Don't look at it again, maybe until the next day. Uh, put it down a little earlier. Um, if that works really well. Up the ante. Uh, spend a, a day or two without it. I do a technology fast probably once every quarter uh, where I spend two, maybe three days without my phone at all. It's, it's huge for productivity uh, because, I, again, I know that I don't need it that much. 
So forgetting moderation, that was that third tip. It's all about taking your uh, your your deprivation to the extreme, if you will. Uh, you know, purposeful hardship, uh, which is a very very good exercise. It's not a great way to live, but it's a good exercise. Uh, so you can realize that you're really not missing that much uh, when you do that hardship. So again, me with the family this month of of, of not spending, uh, that purposeful hardship is actually an enjoyable process. And when we come back to it, we'll we'll spend less. What I'm looking for for here for you is that same thing with your habits. Find habits that are distracting you. Get rid of them completely for a week, two weeks, a month. Uh, and when you come back to them, again, you can pick them back up, but they will be a lot. you will need them a lot less. Uh, and most of the time, what you lose is far less than what you gain, um, if it's anything at all. You, when you come back, I, I guarantee you're going to be happier with more productivity and more happiness.